Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture. Let's keep going and now we're going to cover Amazon Athena part 2. All right. So let's let's talk security. So Amazon Athena is secure because it leverages first IAM policies or AWS identity and access management policies. It covers as well or leverages access control lists or ACLs and there is Amazon S3 bucket policies as well. And using S3 bucket policies, you can allow or prevent users from querying it using Athena. So basically, once you have data protection, Amazon Athena can't do anything. You can't go and query data if, if S3 is blocking access. And you can use IAM policies. You can grant and deprive IAM users access to various buckets in Amazon S3. And Athena allows encryption for both client-side and server-side. And Athena enables users to query encrypted data stored in Amazon S3. So you can have encryption, you have IAM, you have ACL, you have a bunch of Amazon S3 bucket policies. Again, tons of levels of security. And it also allows users to write encrypted results back to S3 buckets. And as well, there is transport layer security or TLS that could encrypt data in transit between Athena, Athena and S3. This is actually pretty important too. Please, like, you know, like, like try, I don't want to say memorize it, but at least be familiar with it. Now you have IAM policies, identity and access management. You have ACL or access control list. You have Amazon S3 buckets as well. You have TLS if you want to do encryption in transit. You have encryption on the client side. You have encryption on the server side. It's like, you know, like ultra, ultra secure. All right. What about the cost model? users can only be charged for the queries they run. So again, you don't have to buy servers from the beginning or maybe like, you know, there is any upfront cost. You don't have to worry about that. And users are charged based on data size scanned during each query. That's why it's very important to be very as, as efficient as you can when you actually start to scan this data. And how to users, how do users reduce costs and improve performance? First, by doing compressing, partitioning, or converting the data to a column format. That could basically dramatically reduce the size and resources Athena requires to scan and execute queries, and that could result in 30 to 90% cost reduction. If you guys remember, if when we did partitioning before, by basically, instead of having, let's say, if you have a bunch of files, you don't just throw all these files in, a, in, a, in an Amazon S3 bucket. That would be an extremely, extremely inefficient. Why? Because you need everything to be in order. Because once you have partitioning in place, then you can direct Athena to a specific, let's say, folder within folder within folder. You don't have to scan the entire thing to actually to actually query the data. And this is very critical and very important. And that's where, you know, kind of the expertise and, and, and knowledge comes into play to actually try to reduce cost. And users are charged $5 per terabyte scanned. OK, and with a 10 megabytes minimum per query. Again, so I, I would say it's extremely like cost effective. It's $5 per, per terabyte. Again, I would assume even if it's, you know, it's quite high, for example, to let's say if you um, if you're doing you're using other query services, you can this cost at some point will will be reduced. You know, if again, if there's increased competition, Amazon will have to, you know, somehow reduce the cost somewhere. But again, the amazing thing about about that here is that if you are using or relying on Amazon SageMaker to develop all your, you know, like AI and machine learning um, algorithms and you're relying on s3 for example to store the data you know like basically you, you would be forced kind of thing to use athena in a way you just you don't need headaches of introducing another you know like like to say services and, and 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 all the headaches that come with it just everything in one place everything is integrated people have tried it and built system with it with it so you're probably going to use the service anyways and if you cancel a query users will be charged based on the amount of data scanned and athena supports apache orc and apache parquet as well and Amazon S3 and Glue have separate charges. So please note that you're going to be charged for Amazon S3 and you are charged as well for Glue and you are as charged as well for Athena. So obviously, it's, it's a great business model from, from, uh, from Amazon's perspective, of course. All right. So if you guys remember, we integrated Amazon Athena and Glue, as you guys can see here. We covered that before, but I'm going to cover it here again. If you guys remember, I put my data in an Amazon S3 bucket. And then what you do is that you create these crawlers or glue, AWS glue crawlers that go in there and try to scan the data periodically and generate glue data catalog. 
data catalog will tell you, okay, these are the different schemas, these are the different columns that you have, and so on. And then once you have that data catalog available, then you can use rely on Amazon Athena to basically go there and query that data. So Athena and AWS Glue data catalog work seamlessly together. AWS Glue can be used to create databases and tables or the schemas so that Athena can use it to query the data. And again, once the data, once the AWS Glue data catalog is available, then you can use Amazon Athena and you can use Amazon Redshift as well to query the data. Once you query that data, then you can use Amazon QuickSight afterwards to visualize your data. All right, again, we're going to cover Amazon QuickSight coming up in the next couple of lectures, but it basically just it's a business intelligence tool, just data visualization tool. Okay, all right. So what does it look like? Again, here, if you guys take a look at it, this is Amazon Athena once you open it. And basically here you can, you can outline here your, um, your query, and then you can get the results in here. Okay, again, pretty straightforward and pretty simple. And again, nobody on the exam will really ask you, okay, to like, you know, like details of, of how to actually query the, the data and how to like, you know, like actually write code, for example, that's, that's out of the scope of the exam. All right, so now to the big question, okay? Do you guys remember we covered Amazon Redshift Spectrum? Do you guys remember that? Okay, so the question is, what's the difference between Amazon Athena and Amazon Redshift Spectrum, and when should I use each one of them? So Redshift Spectrum was used to generate queries as well directly into Amazon S3. If you guys remember, we can use Amazon Redshift Spectrum, and one of the features is that you can actually query data directly into your Amazon S3 bucket. So it seems like, you know, that's what Amazon Athena is doing. So what's the point? So first, Amazon Athena can send queries directly to Amazon S3 and Redshift Spectrum can actually do the same thing as well. You can send queries directly to S3 as well. Athena is designed for ad easy and ad hoc queries into S3. This one, Redshift Spectrum, if you're actually designed for users who actually use Redshift. And this one, Athena, does not require Redshift clusters. You can actually just, you know, run it on, on an EC2 instance, or you actually don't need to, like, it's serverless and to, to start with. And but Redshift Spectrum will require Redshift clusters to actually to actually be running. So again, if you're, uh, you just want to do ETL, you know, like jobs or, or or queries, you can just use Athena. If you are, you know, if you if you don't have even have Redshift, just use Athena. But however, if you have Redshift, then you can leverage Ref Redshift Spectrum if you wanted to. All right. Okay. That's all what I have for this lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it. In the next lecture, we are going to cover Amazon QuickSight and we're going to have part one and part two. So please enjoy AWS machine learning certification course and I will see you guys in the next lecture.